After months of teasing his decision on the Iran nuclear deal, today the president finally dropped the world's most expected bomb. Breaking news, President Trump is making good on his threat to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. In a few moments, I will sign a presidential memorandum to begin reinstating U.S. nuclear sanctions on the Iranian regime. America will not be held hostage to nuclear blackmail. Well, that makes sense. I mean, he's already being blackmailed by Putin and a porn star. A third one would be too much, <laughs> just too much. Now, just to remind you what exactly the Iran deal is. Back in 2015, Barack Obama and leaders from Germany, France, the UK, Russia, and China reached a historic agreement to lift sanctions on, Russia, on Iran. And in exchange, Iran would halt its nuclear program and change its chant from death to America to a slightly less harsh herpes to America. <laughs> And many experts agree that this was a huge diplomatic achievement. So the question is, why would Trump pull out? The fact is, this was a horrible, one-sided deal that should have never, ever been made. The deal allowed Iran to continue enriching uranium and, over time, reach the brink of a nuclear breakout. It also fails to address the regime's development of ballistic missiles. The deal does nothing to constrain Iran's destabilizing activities, including its support for terrorism. Okay, he raises some good points, except for the fact that they're all bullshit. I mean, yeah, it is true that the deal didn't address every single problem with Iran, but it did address the main problem, nuclear weapons. Like, you can't get rid of the entire thing just because it didn't fix everything. It's like saying, this detergent got the stains out of my shirt, but it didn't save my crumbling marriage. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and as for his claim that the deal lets Iran keep enriching uranium, Trump just ignores the fact that it forbids them from enriching it for nuclear weapons, which seems relevant to me. And yes, don't get me wrong, it's possible that 10 years from now, Iran could restart their nuclear program. But now that Trump has killed the deal, they could restart the program tomorrow, which to me sounds insane. It's like, if I have a choice, between The Rock body slamming me 10 years from now or The Rock body slamming me tomorrow, I'm gonna take 10 years from now. <laughs> yeah, The Rock's a busy guy. He might forget by then. Uh, plus, in 10 years, maybe I could take him. You know, if I start taking steroids now, really working out hard, I've got a chance. What I'm saying is, you better watch out, Dwayne Johnson! I'm coming for you! Did I just start a fight with Dwayne Johnson? Forgive me, I pull out. I'm pulling out of the deal, I'm pulling out. <laughs> So it seems clear that, that, that Trump cares about the Iran deal's actual facts as much as he cares about any other facts. And the truth is, he's decided to scrap the Iran deal before he even knew that it worked. We talk about Iran, and that's uh, one of the worst deals ever made, one of the worst contracts ever signed, ever in anything. As far as Iran is concerned, I would have never made that deal. You know there's a bad signal when you go across and you see on television the Iranian chief negotiator goes home and they're celebrating him in the streets, right? This is one of the dumbest contracts I've ever seen of any kind. This was done by extremely stupid people. This contract is so dumb, you're supposed to say, how dumb is it? This contract is so dumb... How dumb is it? They try to find the corner of a round room. These are the jokes, people. These are the jokes. So dumb. Look, the reason we know that Trump is wrong about leaving this deal is because he's the only leader who wants to leave it. Every other country who signed it wants to stay in. Because remember the last two weeks? They've been a rolling house party at the White House of leaders begging Trump to stay in the Iran deal. That's why Macron put up with Trump's whole dandruff thing. That's why Merkel put up with Trump's whole Trump thing. And yesterday, <laughs> Britain made one last-ditch effort. British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson visited Washington on Monday, even appearing to reach out to the president on Fox and & Friends. And we need to find a way of fixing that. And the president has been right to call attention to it. But you've got to do that without just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And let me just remind you, if they do get a nuclear weapon, you're gonna get uh, an arms race in the, in the Middle East. Do you realize that's how desperate America's allies are? Britain didn't just send someone onto Trump's favorite TV show, they sent his British twin. <laughs> I, actually, I actually wouldn't be shocked if Trump actually thinks that's how he sounds when he speaks. 
Like he says, it's bad, folks. Not good, not good at all. So not good. But in his head, he hears there, there are negative ramifications that, from my perspective, <laughs> uh, cannot, cannot be overemphasized, and we, we have to deal with this bigly. <laughs> so the world wanted President Trump to stay in the deal. And when you hear the potential consequences, you'll understand why. This is a reckless strategic mistake. No matter what the president says, the deal constrains Iran's nuclear program. So how does pulling out of it make you safe? If they restart their enrichment because now we have made the deal null and void, what will Donald Trump do? We're setting in motion today a process that could well lead to conflict down the road. This moves the world closer to war in this region. They are the third largest oil producer, and prices will go up. Americans will feel this at the pump. That's right. This could lead to a horrible destabilizing war. And even worse, we'll pay slightly more for gas. <laughs> yeah, so that means when you're trying to flee the nuclear apocalypse, you have to look at your gas tank the whole time. It's gonna be like, ah, oh, now that the war has started, we gotta get out of here. Drive, drive, drive. Whoa, whoa, slow down, buddy. Gas is not cheap, slow down. <laughs> not too fast. We'll scream fast and we'll drive slow. Ah, 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 go around, go around, ah! <laughs> And there's one more consequence to leaving this deal. It's a really big, big issue. It has to do with America's credibility. Think about how it looks to the rest of the world for the United States to just blow off an international agreement years in the making. Once you make a deal with someone, it's really important to carry it through. Otherwise, you start developing the wrong reputation, and it makes it impossible to make future deals. And look, I'm not the only one who's saying this. A much wiser man once said the same thing. Once you make a deal with someone, it's really important to carry it through. You start developing the wrong reputation, it makes it impossible to make future deals. The president should listen to that guy.